Okay, so tell me a little bit about um, the decision making process in the business. Um, well, I suppose there's, there's every nu any number of decisions that you have to make in any given day. Some of them you quite often put on the spot and you have to make a decision that you didn't realise that you know, the question was going to get put to you. I'm not going to remember staff wanting to do something and you know, people often put you on the spot and um, especially team members that can you know, bring in another, another headache. It's all, all part of it. Um, so I think, well, generally, like I say, I'm a, there's two of us that run, run the company and we will just always talk very openly um, through the decisions and make sure that both are in agreement. Um, and actually that's really nice because you can just bounce ideas off each other or you can thrash through a point and make sure that you then, um, we find that people often one or play devil's advocate against another not just to be irritating, but it does mean that you then, you thrash, you thrash through it and you've actually kind of troubleshot quite a lot there um, and then you can make a decision that you're comfortable with. Um, and then there are times that, you know, sometimes it can feel difficult actually making the decision. Sometimes it's easier just to not make the decision and, and bury your head in the sand and that's what uh, when you start doing that that's when you really get into get into trouble um, you know you need to take this, take decisions head on and, and respond quickly and and move quickly with them um, and sometimes it's not always going to be one that you you know you, like I say you might prefer not to have made the decision but you have to and you have to then commit to that 100% and make sure that you back the decision about the idea because if you have any element of doubt behind it, the, the team will pick up on that, the customers will pick up on that, everyone will pick up on that. Um, so, yeah, we, we make the decisions between the two of us, um, but we're always, as a partnership, you have to back each other as well. And depending on the situation. Yeah. So in terms of... Um, Kind of day to day problem solving. Let's say you've got, you know, you've got, you've got a trips out there and there's a problem with the trip. Yeah. So how does that work in your, because you've got a remote teams, presumably. Yeah, so, so how does that work? So we've got remote teams and then um, we just make sure that, so I will handle the operations more. So if they're in that situation, if there is a problem on the trip, um, you know, call it a minor, a, you know, a minor issue. Um, the person on the ground would phone up and would, would speak to me about it. And there's also such quick communication these days as well. We're actually in touch via WhatsApp and you know, Messenger regularly run the company, communicates through a you know, messaging system called Slack, which is more and more common now. So everyone's in, everyone in the team is in touch. And we've built it up in a very um, remote way. So. We're here in our head office, which is an exeter, and there's six of us here. So me, Will, the finance guys, um, a couple of salespeople, and then the bookings are all managed from here. But then we also have salespeople and people going the trips together down in Newquay. We have an office in, in Cornwall. Um, and so that's just that's where they want to live. Um, and then we also have the, the trip leaders in Cape Town. Um, and then the trip leaders, once they've done a few, quite a few months, on, a few years on the road running the trip, so then become really valuable to the company. So we're more seeing that those guys are coming off, and it's quite tiring constantly being the tour guide when they're coming behind that and actually working for us in, in marketing or in operations. So they still want to live in Cape Town. Um, so all the modern communications that we have are really opened up opened up that communication uh, process, I suppose. Yeah. Um, and I mean, at, at any kind of given time, you, you, you just, you're, you're chatting in a pretty open open forum, which is good and bad. Like, it's, um, I never like getting put on on the spot with a decision when you've got other, you quite often find that there are decisions that the managing directors or the CEOs of the, of the company need to make, and they need to get made between those people. Um, the only problems have ever really happened if uh, we were having a 
a conversation with everyone in, in SA, you call it in the middle of a middle of a meeting, there's eight of us in there, Will and I have been discussing a point and everyone else is in there and certainly you've got everyone else's opinions around the table, which a lot of the time is is irrelevant, but if it's actually just a decision that needs to get made by um, the leaders of the company, the team just needs to know what the decision is uh, and they need to hear that directly from the leadership. They don't need to see the whole process yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, behind it. So, a bit it, too open. Yeah, a bit too yeah. open. And we try and be open. Um, and then, so, yeah, sometimes it's not, you know, it's all part of, it's all part of the skills of, of running a business. And that's what you realise, that there are so many different elements that you're going to have to come across when, when running a business. It's not like you, you know, well, when you start up a company, you can get on the phone to tax support because there is no tax support. That'll be you. Or pick up the phone and speak to an HR person. Again, that will fall to you. And then until you get to a stage where you can start to employ these different areas. But when you're starting out and it's a small business, these are all costs that you. it's much easier just to kind of pick them up and work them out yourself. Um, so I suppose it's... It, and, and there's a difference between having a business that runs between you and the co-founder to now we're a team of about 20, I suppose. And then the management of that is different as well. So I find that more and more, and more I'm actually less involved in the, the daily operations of the business and I'm more sitting on top of it yeah. and organising the kind of managers of the different areas. That's an interesting point that you raise because this is what, you know, as companies grow, um, they, this is what happens to the founders. They, they, they mm. get, in a sense, do you feel deta more detached perhaps from the day to day, or is it just that there, you, there are certain you're things doing that other things? I, it's quite, um, there are certain things that you're obviously going to lose touch on. Generally, I still like most decisions to go through me. If, you know, if it's as small as a, as a newsletter going out, I like to just see it, make sure it's come out, but I'm not the one putting it together anymore. Um, you know, the sales calls, the, the amount of customers that we have, I, I'm not talking to every one of them, I'm not meeting every one of them by any means anymore. But you need to make sure that obviously the trip that they're going on has been fully signed off, the person that's leaving the trip has been fully signed off. So you just need to make sure that you get those quality control measures in, in place um, so that the experience that people are having meets the standards that, that you know need to be there. Um, but at the beginning, we were doing, you know, we were doing everything from the price of, if we made a, just talk through the sort of, this, the, pre, the our kind of business procedure, we would be on the phone to someone, to so say we've got a customer there, someone there, we will talk to them about a trip, and then they book, they'll pay over the phone. Beforehand, that salesperson would then put the phone down, and then think, right, okay, this person, but they need to get some confirmation through as quickly as they could. So they would then stop selling, they would then go on, they would go onto Excel, they would make an invoice, they would write out the letter, they would put together the info pack, and then that would go. And that was actually such an inefficient use of their time. And it meant that we were having to have all these kind of multi-skilled people who probably weren't skilled. So you've got someone who's not very good at numbers doing writing out invoices, yeah. they're writing out the letters, yet they're not selling anymore. So now we have Specific, a complete procedure where someone makes a sale and then they literally say this sale has been done that lands on the booking manager's desk the booking manager sends it out invoice gets done finance guy sends it out and um, it's those sort of those sort of kind of frameworks that you, you don't get if you go straight from straight from education or straight from life just into um, running your own business if I'd gone out and worked for 15 years in any industry, I would have seen those systems in a company. I would know that when I started one up, I would have needed to put, put all those in place. Um, but because we were young when we started, there's also a reality that the person, the people that you employ, we were fairly inexperienced when we started, and, and so, but we still took people under our wing who had, who were also kind of quite inexperienced as, as well, because it would be very difficult for us to as a 23-year-old, manage a 35-year-old finance manager who's got 12 years of experience. Whereas now that we've been running the company for 12 years, we can employ people at any level because effectively no one knows the business like, like we do. 
Um, and that's really helped us mature as well and has meant that we can get better people involved in the company, which has helped us push forward. But it's all part of the, the learning process, I think. Yeah.